Now, before I can actually go into the story that you clicked on today, I have to bring you up to speed about the fighting that's been going on between George Stephanopoulos and Walt Disney CEO Bob Iger, okay? Then this story, which I have to say is alleged, I wasn't on any of the calls, I didn't receive any of the emails, okay? Um, This alleged showdown that went on Tuesday between George and Bob Iger will make better sense to you. Whether it's true or not, we will probably find out later. But right now I'm reporting on you what the rumor is. So let me bring you up to speed and then we'll go into the story, okay? For the past two years, I have been reporting on the downfall of Walt Disney, which owns ABC News, okay? So let's talk about this really quickly. Three years ago, the current president of Walt Disney, which owns ABC News and all of its subsidiaries, okay, the Marvel Universe, all of that, he went into retirement. He said, I'm done. He was in his 70s. He's, I'm done. I just want to rest and enjoy my, my grandkids, blah, blah, blah. However, when he went into retirement, y'all, he kept in place his key people in those positions, you know, executive positions. Now, there was a guy by the name of Bob Chapik, yes, another Bob, who was over all the Walt Disney theme parks around the world. He had been very successful in that position. They promoted Bob Chapik to president of Walt Disney. However, according to all the insiders who spoke to the Los Angeles Times, USA Today, Associated Press, and the New York Times, it was sort of kind of like an Alfred Hitchcock Rebecca type situation. The dude just could never get from under the ghost, the shadow of Bob Iger, no matter how hard he tried. He would make decisions, insiders would say. And then those who were loyal to Bob Iger, who were still in some some of those key positions, they would buck his decisions. Well, long story short, he was also tasked, I'm speaking of Chapik, with making sure that the streaming arm of Walt Disney, Disney Plus, was highly successful. Well, girl, allegedly Bob Chapik, I don't have to say allegedly because there was an investigation. He began cooking the books. And so on these investor calls, he would say, oh, it's making millions upon millions of dollars when in actuality, streaming, the streaming leg was losing millions of dollars. Well, they hired an independent firm. They found out, you know, people told such and such, and they opened an investigation to investigate his alleged fumbling of the numbers. So they got him out the way. We never learned the results of that investigation, by the way. But they fired Bob Chapik and the board voted to bring back out of retirement Bob Iger. He's been in that position since. However, Bob came in with a sledgehammer this time and he said, that's it. We're doing things differently. We must become a profitable business again because they lost a lot of revenue under Bob Chapik, okay? So the first thing he did, you probably heard about it, he slashed 70,000, you heard me right, 70,000 jobs. That was a year and a half ago. He did some other major things, not to mention he went all around on all these, uh, you know, investor calls and all these interviews saying, eventually, I plan to sell all the television assets that Walt Disney owns, which includes ABC News, because in this day and time, we just don't need TV assets. The whole landscape of television has changed. We're now into streaming, et cetera, et cetera. Allegedly, that pissed off people like George Stephanopoulos and some of those high-ranking anchors at ABC because, well, that means, baby, your job going to go too or you're going to at least have to jump ship and go to another network, okay? So they say when he came back into office, the beef between he and George, who a lot of people say George Stephanopoulos feels like he's the golden child of ABC News. They say he feels feels like he's the coup de gras, that nobody can touch him, that he is it there. But a lot of people don't agree with that, okay? Now that you know that, let me tell you what allegedly occurred. So last Friday, Joe, he's out on the campaign trail. He's in Wisconsin. After the debate, he's talking to the crowd, and this is what he had to say. President Joe Biden appearing spry and ready for a fight in Wisconsin Friday. Week. Can't say it's our best performance. But ever since then, there's been a lot of speculations. What's Joe going to do? 
Is he going to stay in the race? Is he going to drop out? What's he going to do? Well, here's my answer. I am running and going to win again. All right, so that's Friday, okay? Now, Friday night, okay, there's this interview, okay, pre-taped, pre-recorded, some say heavily edited, that George Stephanopoulos runs that he had with Joe where a lot of you probably saw it. You, you're probably aware of a lot of the gaps and a lot of the things that went on, okay? So now we come to this Tuesday, Tuesday, July 9th. This is Tuesday morning early in New York City. George is on the streets. He's on Fifth Avenue. Uh, by the way, he's dressed. It looks like he's come from a good workout at 63, right? He's walking along when allegedly, okay, and I have to say allegedly, a pedestrian stops him and asks him about Joe. I'm going to play the video for you. Now, keep in mind, this was someone filming this on their cell phone. So the audio is not the best, but you've heard about it, I'm sure. George basically says, girl, well, he didn't say girl, but he basically says he can't do four more years. So take a listen. Hey, how you doing? Good. What do you think? Do you think Pride should step down? You talk to him more than anybody else have lately. And you can be honest. You don't think you can for more years? All right. That's an answer. And for George, it was a very honest answer. So now this is allegedly what happened. As soon as that video was sold to TMZ and started making the blogs, CNN, NBC, all of these rival networks, allegedly the executives, whether that included Bob Iger or was Bob Iger, I don't know. But allegedly the Walt Disney, okay, executives contacted George and they had, let's just say, a come to Jesus. A lot of you know that Walt Disney has been in a battle with Republicans, uh, particularly in Florida, uh, Ron DeSantis, for the last several years. Uh, ABC News has become a mouthpiece for the Biden administration. When all that fighting happened, they kind of just went left, really, really left, and they will not really cover much negative about uh, Joe. There have been anchors here and there who've spoken out, like on The View and other places, but then they get quickly reined in, okay? But allegedly, George was taken to task by the Walt Disney executives about that particular statement. And a powwow and a showdown took place. Allegedly, they were saying to him, you must retract this statement. You're our chief you know, anchor. You're one of the best. You know, they listed off all these things. You used to be the White House, uh, you know, uh, correspondent. You, you, you know, this, that, and the third. You cannot, you of all people cannot say this. And allegedly George stood his ground, guys, and said, no, I will not apologize. I, I was speaking as a citizen of this country. I was not speaking as a GMA anchor. The guy caught me. I answered his question. I don't see anything wrong with it. Allegedly, there was a huge back and forth that went on a verbal scuffle where George was threatened that if he didn't, there would be consequences with his job. So they came according to... Uh, to the reports, George's attorneys, ABC's attorneys, George's agents, all these people, and they came to an agreement. George would not have to apologize for saying that he didn't think Biden could do four more years, but they came to a happy medium. He would simply say, I shouldn't have spoken. I was asked and I shouldn't have responded, which is exactly what happened in these statements. And this is what makes me believe that this rumor, this alleged powwow and showdown between the executives and George actually took place because the statements bear it out. They bear out exactly what the rumor says, that they came to an agreement of what they would say. But they're still very much bad, bad blood. So a lot of you know, this is George's statement and I'm quoting here. He says, quote, earlier today, I respond. But by the way, this all went on. This was Tuesday morning. The, the showdown went on Tuesday, <laughs> mid morning and afternoon. The statement came out Tuesday night. George says, earlier today, I responded to a question from a passerby. I shouldn't have. <laughs> and ABC comes out with a statement Tuesday night saying George expressed his own point of view and not the position of ABC News. Now, according to the reports I'm hearing, allegedly, George is pissed. He's fuming that he would even be called and contacted by the ABC Walt Disney brass about something he responded to as a citizen. But guys, listen, I don't know 
kind of what George is on here. Maybe he's on the whole, I'm, I'm the ish, I'm the golden child mentality. Because think about it, George Stephanopoulos is George Stephanopoulos. And if having the reputation he has, being who he is, and having been a spokesperson for ABC News for so long, yes, I can see Walt Disney ABC's point. Yes, you're a regular citizen. Yes, outside of this job, you have a right to espouse whatever your personal viewpoints are. But the general American public aren't going to take those views as just you speaking for you. They're going to, by proxy, okay, assume and take it as that you're speaking for ABC News. That maybe you've got some insight of what's happening behind the scenes. And this is what ABC thinks, or at least your co-anchors or your co-workers at the network think. And so I understand why he was called to task. However, I do appreciate the fact that George... Because he has a seniority. He stood his ground. A lot of people say that George does not feel that Bob Iger is going to be in position long. So he has no problem going back and forth with the office. He has no problem standing his ground, pushing back against what he feels is unfair treatment of some of these top anchors who have, according to the reports, led ABC to all the excellent ratings that they have sustained over the many, many years before Bob uh, went into retirement and after Bob came out of retirement. But at the end of the day, I really believe that this alleged showdown was more about ego. You can't be a George and think that when you speak on the street of New York or at the Ralphs, that people aren't going to hear ABC News. We associate you with that. That's how a lot of people know him. Now, George worked for the Clinton administration. He's, he worked on Capitol Hill many years even before that. He was chief of staff for a guy before he even touched the Clinton uh, you know, administration. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, George is ABC News to a lot of people. And this goes into the whole argument that a lot of people are having. Do Americans, we're speaking of the average American, have we lost our ability to know the difference between a personal opinion and a fact? Have we lost our ability to know the difference between a person speaking on their job, representing their job in that moment in time, versus now you are off the job, you are a citizen of the country? I wonder what will happen after this. Whatever happens, I will be reporting on it. Stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for listening. This is the MVMO podcast. My view, my opinion. Leave your thoughts below. I'll talk to you later.